the my son he came to me and he had a pair of I mean he had a piece of paper and he gave it to me and said it was a present and I opened it up and it was a pair of tweezers and it was a pair that I've, I've never seen any like it before they were really long and I mean I asked him like where he got them from and he said he found them in the yard and but at first I was thinking, well, I can't use this. And I went into the bathroom and I actually tried them. And I, w I was able to get like 20 hairs with these tweezers at one time. And I started here and I plucked big wads of hair at a time. And it really didn't hurt. I just got so used to it. Um, and I don't know if there's a difference between plucking one hair at a time and plucking 20 hairs at once, but I cluster plucked this whole area right here, and I could not believe when the hair grew back, I don't have any hair in certain areas. I mean, it, it, it didn't grow back, and I was just really shocked that I have less hair on my face now than what I had two months ago. And I also noticed that the hairs that grew back really dark, well, now they're thinner, and they're also, they, they're white. I mean, they've completely lost the dark color to them. Um, I still just let the hair grow back out, and um, I keep doing the same thing over and over again. And, but it has, it has thinned tremendously. I'm kind of thankful to my grandmother because, I mean, she was a plucker. She would pluck her eyebrows, and she had no eyebrows. She would have to pencil them in. But I got to thinking that if she plucked, I mean, she was, like, crazy plucking all the time until there was no hair at all. And I got to thinking about that, and I, I thought, well, it could be hereditary. You know, maybe, just maybe, you know, if I consistently pluck as she did, that the hair would stop growing. And I'm thinking that it is working. So if you have a relative that's kind of close to you and they pluck their eyebrows and they didn't grow back, there's a good possibility that you too could pluck and they're not going to grow back either. And I'm just going to continue to do that. And I mean, it takes about about a week for the hair to grow out long enough to pluck it, so I have like an ugly stage that I go through. But when I actually pluck all the hair off, it takes a couple of hours to do that. Uh, it takes about two weeks. I mean, I have like two weeks of no facial hair, and I'm just thrilled about that. Um, so, to me, I mean, if you, it's like a low budget transitioning, I guess, I don't know. Uh, I don't have any money, it all goes to everything else. And no one sees this as being a necessity but me, you know. And so I have to do the best that I can in this, in this transition. And so, I mean, I, look for ways to do this without having to go through all the money process. And, <clears throat> I mean, personal voice training, you know, I mean, I can't afford to have somebody teach me to, to speak more feminine. Uh, I can't afford my trellises. Um, I can't even, I mean, it's just crazy. But, so, I mean, so I guess, a lot of the videos are going to be about things, cheap ways of transitioning. I mean, not all of us have the money to do it, you know. And hopefully one day that I will. I did, I did have my son say when he graduates and he goes to college, he told me that he was going to save the money for my transition. He's going to, I mean, I was just I was like, what? 
He said that, that he wanted to help me do this, and he knows that it's taking a long time. And he told me, I just was shocked that he would say something like that, you know. Um, like I said, my kids are supportive. I don't necessarily think that I could, you know, go back and not get married and not have five kids. I mean, if you don't have any, that's a different story. But me already having five kids, I would have to do it all over again knowing what I know. Knowing that my kids are so receptive, knowing that my kids care enough about me and that they want me to be happy. And, you know, I may lose my wife, but I can see that my kids, I'm not going to lose them. I don't know if I will lose them temporarily if we divorce, but uh, there's no way. I mean, I would have to do this again, you know. Uh, originally, my intentions weren't deceitful. I, w I didn't intend to deceive people into thinking that I was a man and all this stuff here. You know, I just really didn't think about what other people thought. And also, at the time that I got married, like I said, I went to church and everything about me was sinful and everything else. And uh, my I met my wife there. Uh, I thought it was something that I could just ask God to forgive me for, and He would give me the strength to overcome how I felt and all the stuff here. And that just, it never happened. And in fact, I couldn't understand why it wasn't happening. How come He would help so many people with their problems and things, but then me, I'm just stuck here, you know, and I'm not able to get over things and, and then I found out why I found out that he wasn't going to forgive me for something that wasn't sinful um, I studied more and I found that transgender people are actually off the scriptures and transgender people got saved just like regular people and there wasn't no expectations for them to act like they're a man or act like they're supposed to be a woman or, and they I mean the old English term was a eunuch I mean we don't use that term anymore uh, you know we've got all the new trans woman and transgender and and all these different new terms that are there and we just don't use that word anymore and I've done research on it and then I understood that God accepted me the way that I was but religions doesn't and I don't know what happened from back here you know in the book of Acts where a eunuch's getting saved you know and I just I don't know what happened they just I don't know what they did. They just don't accept it anymore. But God does. And so anyway, that's just my little religious part. Um, I'm still going to connect this to trans-spiritual. Um, it, it is to help other people see that, that God does still love them. And even if everybody else is telling them that he doesn't, or telling them that he doesn't, it's just simply a lie. And, but anyway, um, that's all I have for this video. And like I said, I really love this necklace, and I'm so proud of my daughter that she thought of me when she saw it. And um, I have something to say about my daughter, but I think I need to get permission from her before I do it. So in a later video, and she says it's okay, then I need to know, I know something. Um, I just thank you guys for listening to the things that I have to say. I, like I said, I, I hope that the things that I say strengthen others and, and help them get through their transition. And 
and I thank you for your support and the comments that you make and leave for me, you know, and, and the encouragement that I get. And anyway, that's all I have to say, and thank you once again. Bye.